Okay, we're going to revisit rational functions, but some of this I'm just going to gloss over because we've already been over it, and it should be pretty easy by now. Uh, remember, a rational function is basically a function that can be written as a polynomial over a polynomial. And now you should know how to find the domain of rational functions. Uh, remember, x cannot be any number that makes the denominator zero. So basically, you can freeze the video and read this if you like, but for the first one, x cannot equal 5. For the second one, x cannot equal uh, negative 3 or 3. And for this one, the domain is all real numbers because there's no way that you can square x and get a negative 9, so therefore x squared plus 9 cannot be 0. You also know how to find the intercepts. Uh, to find the y-intercepts, you let x be 0, and you solve for your y-value. To find your x-intercept, you set the function equal to 0. And with rational functions, basically what you're looking for is when the numerator is 0. So find what values make the numerator 0. Um, remember, they can't make the denominator 0 as well. So um, it has to be numbers that can't make, that makes the um Numerator is 0, but not the denominator. So here, um, let x be 0, and you get 0. Um, set the function equal to 0, and you also get 0. And that's the only solution. And then here, let x be 0, and you get 1 third. And set the expression equal to 0, and you get negative 3. Now, we talked earlier about there being three types of asymptotes. The two most common types are the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes but there is also a slant asymptote. Locating the vertical asymptote is fairly easy. Um, basically, um, if p of x and q of x is a rational function that have no common factors and the number a is a zero of the denominator, then x equal a is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so down here, um, you'll notice that the only factor on the bottom is x minus 5, and there's no common factor of that in the numerator, so x equal 5 is the vertical asymptote. Here, um, if you factor this, you'll get x plus 3 and x minus 3 as the factors of the bottom, so the vertical asymptotes would be the line x equal plus or minus 3. Um, this one, since nothing will make x squared plus 9 equal 0, there's no uh, vertical asymptotes here. And this one, um, if you'll notice, x plus 3 is a factor of the denominator and of the numerator. So negative 3 cannot be a vertical asymptote. You're actually going to get a hole there. But x minus 3 is not common to the top and bottom. So x equal 3 is a vertical asymptote. So these are a couple of examples. Uh, x squared minus 9 over x minus 5. For this first one, of course, it looks like that. And um, you can see I drew the vertical asymptote here at x equal 5. Uh, this one, remember, had two vertical asymptotes. So one goes down here at minus 3, and the other one is at x equal plus 3. And so that's the vertical asymptotes. Now, to locate horizontal asymptotes, uh, what you have to do is you have to look at the degree of the numerator and denominator. So let's say n is the degree of the, um, let's see, what am I saying? Okay, p of x it has the degree n. So n is the degree of the numerator. And q of x has degree m, so m is the degree of the denominator. Okay, so basically, um, and then we'll assume that a is the leading coefficient in the numerator, and b is the leading coefficient in the denominator. So there's three cases we can consider. Uh, if the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, in other words, if n is less than m, then the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0, or the x-axis. If the degree of the top equals m, then the line y equal ab is the horizontal asymptote. And if m, n is greater than m, then the graph has no horizontal asymptote. The graph either increases or decreases 
without bound as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. So let's take these one at a time. If you look at this first one, uh, the degree on top is 2, the degree on bottom is 3, so the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. Um, therefore, um, based on number 1, y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Now, this next one, the degree of the top, is equal to the degree of the bottom. And so the degree, I mean, the horizontal asymptote would be the ratio of these two lead coefficients, 5 over 3. So 5 over 3 would be the, that line would be the horizontal asymptote. And then finally on this one, uh, the degree of the top, 3, is actually greater than the degree of the bottom. So this one would have no horizontal asymptotes. And the graphs of each of these are here. And so if you'll notice this one, you can see the, the x-axis here. And notice that as x goes to negative infinity, see how this graph gets closer and closer to the x-axis? And as x goes to positive infinity, you can see the same thing. It's getting close to the x-axis. Now this one, um, y equals 5 thirds is a horizontal asymptote. And this green dotted line here is the line y equals 5 thirds. And notice as x goes to infinity, see how the line gets closer? And then as x goes to positive infinity, the line gets closer as well. Now, this one had no horizontal asymptote. So you'll notice on this one, as x goes to negative infinity, the graph continues to decrease without bound. And as x goes to positive infinity, the graph continues to increase without bound. So that's basically, um, you know, how you find horizontal asymptotes. There's three practice problems if you want to look at them. But let's go ahead and move on to slant asymptotes. If the degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree of the denominator, then the graph has a slant asymptote. And the slant asymptote is simply a line that has a slope other than zero. To identify a slant asymptote, just use long division or synthetic division. So notice here, I'm going to use synthetic division now that we've learned it. So basically, what I'm going to do is, for this function, I'm going to divide x minus 3 into this function using synthetic division. Now, if I divide by x minus 3, then the number I put here will be 3. So I'm going to put 3 here, bring the 1 down, and 3 times 1 is 3, add it to negative 4, and I get negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then uh, add it to negative 5, I get negative 8. So basically... I can write this as this would be the quotient x. This is like 1x minus 1 because remember I started with degree 2. So that would be x minus 1 and the remainder would be minus 8 over x minus 3. Well, the slant asymptote is actually only the quotient portion. So it's the line y equal x minus 1. And the reason is, is because as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, this portion actually just gets smaller and smaller and completely disappears eventually. So basically, if you look at the graph of that function now, if you look at this green line, this green line is the line y equals x minus 1. And notice... As x gets larger and larger, notice how the line, the graph gets closer and closer to that line. And as x gets smaller and smaller, same thing happens. It gets closer and closer to that line. Okay, so now there's a couple of practice problems there. Um, you can find the asymptotes and then check your work. Okay. So the graphing guidelines for rational functions are, you know, you can check the symmetry for y-axis symmetry or origin symmetry. You can find their intercepts, identify any uh, asymptotes, and if need be, you can find the slant asymptote, and then try to plot at least one point between x-intercept and each vertical asymptote so that you can figure out what's going on. Okay, so let's take a look at what would happen here. Okay, so 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, there's no symmetry because f of negative x won't equal f of x or minus f of x. Uh, intercepts. If x is 0, 
y is 1, so, so we know the graph goes through 0, 1. And then the only way this would equal 0 is if the numerator is 0, and the numerator is 0 at x equal a half. So 1 half 0 is the um, uh, x-intercept. And then uh, you can easily see that x equal 1 makes the denominator 0, so that's going to be a vertical asymptote. And then uh, since the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, you're also going to get a horizontal asymptote of y equal 2. And you can't have a horizontal and a slat asymptote at the same time. So if you'll notice this, this blue line, this represents the line um, x equal 1. That's your vertical asymptote. And this green line represents the line y equal 2. That's your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so now remember we cross the uh, x-axis here at 1 half 0 and the y-axis at 0, 1. Okay, well, I really don't need to do much more because I know if this is a horizontal asymptote, if I continue to go left, it's going to get closer to that. And then I know that at that vertical asymptote, since it's going down, it's going to have to continue going down. And then over here, uh, on the other side of this vertical asymptote, I needed to plot a point because I needed to know if this was going to be, the graph was going to be above or below that horizontal asymptote. So since it's above it, it only makes sense that in order to get closer and closer to it, it's probably going to do it in this fashion, and then going, getting toward the vertical asymptote, it's going to do it in that fashion. Okay, here's another one. Um, this one has, um, has y-axis symmetry because it's an even function, and if you check the intercepts, you get 0, 0 is the only intercept. And then you have a vertical asymptote at two places, minus 2 and 2. And so the vertical asymptote, here's the uh, vertical asymptote, negative 2. Here's the vertical asymptote, 2. And then you get a horizontal asymptote. Um, since the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, the horizontal asymptote is 3 over 1, which is 3. So here's your horizontal asymptote, the line y equal 3. And of course, like I said, the vertical lines are plus or minus 2. So now I know the only intercept is 0, 0, but I went ahead and plotted another point on this side, and I got 1, negative 1. Well, now I know it's got to it's gotta be going down here and heading toward that vertical asymptote over here. And then on, this, on the right of this uh, vertical asymptote, I plotted another point, and I found out that if I plot x before, then y is going to be 4. So since that's above the horizontal asymptote over here, it's got to be approaching the vertical asymptote in this manner and the horizontal asymptote in this manner. And now the good news is, since I have y-axis symmetry, I know the left-hand side is going to mirror the right-hand side. So over here I know I have this piece of the graph and I have this piece of the graph to mirror what I have on the right side. Okay, so quickly um, read this, and let's see if we can write a cost function for this. Um, we know that the cost from this problem, we have a fixed cost of a million dollars and a cost per item of 5,000. So the cost is 5,000x plus a million. Now, to get the average cost, you actually have to calculate this function called C bar. And C bar, you just take the cost function and divide by X, and that'll give you the average cost function. So divide both of these by X, and I actually get, and I, and actually you can simplify that if you wanted to, but, but I didn't. Um, you could actually simplify that as 5,000 plus a million over X. So... So you could simplify it that way if you wanted to, but I just left it in this form. Okay, now it says evaluate that function at 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. Well, when I evaluated at 1,000, I got 6,000 for the average cost. When I evaluated it at 10,000, I got 5,100 for the average cost. And when I evaluated at 100,000, I got 5,010. So notice our average cost drops as we um, create more as we create more items. And notice that if you go back to this function, the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. So the horizontal asymptote would be 5,000. And so that means as production increases out bound, the average cost approaches 5,000. 
And that's pretty much it for uh, this section.